I want to say, first of all, thank you um, to Elizabeth Sackler and to the Brooklyn Museum for this opportunity. I'm happy to be in New York. I could only dream of showing my work in a context I'm honored to be part of. Um, as an ex exchange student for one uh, semester at the Cooper Union in 1994, I was introduced to, femini to feminism, mainly in Bad Girls and Very Bad Girls show, in the New Museum that year. For me, feminism is a constant, invigorating, sometimes subversive starting point, a well-lit ground, a starting point that was marked by the work of women who changed the world of art in the last 30 years. 30. I am going to talk today about the significance of place in how I conceptualize my work and in the way I think within my installation projects. Um, I will try and describe to you the way I create a place where an, an encounter of the viewer and my experience is made possible. So the first work you already can see. Do you hear me? Everything? Okay. Um, this is called Resident Alien. Um, it was shown in a 1997 documenta in Kassel. And what you see here is um, a cargo container, um, standard six meters, where um, I changed the floor, which is normally from uh, either sheet metal or wood. I uh, took a, sh um, a sheet of metal and hammered it with oxycetylene with a lot of heat and um, deformed this, uh, this, the floor into a sort of an imprint of another place. So this work is ex-territorial, is, is a non-place because it can move from place easily from one location to the next, and it is not dependent on, on a site on, inside a gallery or inside a museum. Wherever I ex exhibited it, it stayed um, outside. Um, this is another angle where you can see it's quite laborious work with, a, with, a, with heat. Um, in the smaller box there, there's a small container. Um, there is a, a sort of a lit space and the, a radio playing. And if one wanted to, I just want to show you what, you, what, he's, what a, when you are in the box, your head is coming out of the hole of a, we call it a Turkish, an Eastern toilet, something that you really see in, uh, more in the East, more in the army. This is just another work that has nothing to do with it. Um, so there's really a, a head container inside a, um, a product container. And in order to deform the, sh the, the metal, I needed to heat a hammer and use another hammer, a cold hammer, to, um, to actually hit the, this red uh, metal. And so part of the process came into the work because I just um, exhibited also my work tools in the other side of this hill. Loud enough? Yeah? OK. Um, this is the evening before I shot the video on the beach of Tel Aviv. And this work called Barbed Hula is shown here in uh, Global Feminism. Um, this sort of dress rehearsal in which I was dressed as well, not like uh, on the beach the next morning. Um, I performed it, I practiced on a, on a roof in South Tel Aviv. I still live in the same neighborhood, by the way. And uh, it's about a certain, also, uh, if the container is a non-place, this is a very small place. It's 90 centimeters diameter of a sort of a border that with a centrifugal force, oh, I am always uh, in contact with this barbed wire. If you look carefully, this, you see the barbs are uh, turned outside, uh, outwards, so I'm not being wounded or shredded or whatever uh, Roberta Smith wrote in New York Times yesterday. Um, it's actually more dangerous to um, come near me and um, something that can't be um, sort of accessed, this uh, body. And, um, I think, I think uh, you know, I, I was without clothes on the, at 5 o'clock in the morning, the next morning, where I was shot the video. And I think uh, it's normal to take off your clothes. Otherwise, I started the issue of why do I wear this or why do I wrap myself in these bubble wraps. Uh, but you can decide. We're, I'm not showing the video right here. This is another territory. Um, if, uh, three meters diameter, I made a, a large hula hoop. And uh, posing to the sort of... Uh, um, being, being one woman inside the barbed hula, this is a, um, a group attempt at, uh, at um, mastering this hula dance uh, with a, a big, uh, bigger territory. It's like a task of, um, uh, of a people, of, of a group, of a, a collaboration, a, a corporation, cooperation as well. Um, and this is a small land, a small mountain in a 
taken from a ready-made ready -made scale that I cast in gold. Uh, I inverted one of the sides of this uh, of the scale and turned it into a, a small island of a, a small deformed mountain, the same technique of the container. And it's the same sort of, um, well, actually this is a sort of absurd situation where the work, the inversion, the deformation, the heat, it changed nothing in the, in re the reality of the, the, the physics of this uh, tool that, of course, stands for justice or tries to sh make justice shown, justice in place. Well, there's another music box in the, around us now. I was uh, making, this is a study for a, another project that followed the container and it was a, a different sort of container, a concrete mixer. I was turning into a, a concrete mixer, turned into a music box, turned into um, an ice cream van. And um, this is the, one of the end results. I did this show in many, many uh, locations in uh, Europe and also in New York. Um, I borrowed the logo of, um, of the uh, European Union. I added forks underneath this uh, truck and it was a, a work I, inv I thought of, I mean, ap apropos place, um, sort of, it came when I was living in England and trying to sort of uh, decode the system of um, uh, of how to achieve, uh, how to reach audience without being part of a, of a, uh, the class system, the system of the galleries, the system of the of the of the museums, the, the heaviness of of an art world. I, I propose um, to make a project that first the the public the, the the public hears music, then he sees this sound object, this vehicle, and then I. Um, I wanted to serve the, the, the audience with a story, a simple story that you don't, that is very, um, it's a fairy tale actually. So these are just to show you, these are molds of a icicle, a popsicle, I don't know how you say it in American, ice lollies. And um, it was an ice lolly in the form of a frozen girl. And this story was on the wrapper, which was sort of a, a body bag for this uh, archaeological finding. In September 1998, the remains of a frozen vagrant were found at, at a building site on Orlanienburger Straße in the city of Vermlin. Archaeological analysis of the small corpse provided scientific proof that the little matchstick girl from Hans Christian Andersen's tale truly did exist. The child who was nicknamed Orla, this means a foreskin in Hebrew, aged about five, must have been trying to keep herself warm by lighting the matches that, were supposed, that she was supposed to sell. At the city, as the city celebrated Christmas Eve, she froze to death and was preserved under an urban avalanche originating. So it was it's referring to the time I lived in, in Berlin, and there's a, a moment in 98 where they, were, they found a very ancient homo sapiens frozen between Italy and Austria, and there was many details about his life. Anyway. Ice has preserve, preserved this girl who actually we, I remembered from my childhood, um, this fairy tale where for a change it was a girl who was the protagonist but she didn't make use of what she had and it was matches, she could have warmed herself. Instead of warning, warming herself with the matches, she was supposed to sell them before coming, she, her fa she had no mother, her father said sell them or don't come back home so she lit them and she imagined, she started fantasizing about house, about food, about things that are most important. And then she saw her grandmother in heaven and she froze and joined her, her grandmother and uh, she was very beautiful, found in the morning. So I did a performance uh, just of, of giving this uh, story, giving this ice lolly and I was sort of being uh, the opposite of her. She was supposed to sell matches. I, my task was to uh, distribute free, for free ice lollies, meaning she was, she, her end was to freeze, my end would be to, um, uh oh, three minutes, would be to probably burn my destiny. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna go really fast, three minutes, it's the law. This is a project in New York City, a uh, thread waxing space, uh, that the last show exhibited there, curator Leah Gangitano, and I did a big crater full of sugar this is the idea behind it, that thatching sugar from clouds into 
thin walls and making an utopic sort of society that t can translate this love or this empty energy into a real place. This is the Sahara Desert, this is me working, this is uh, my, <laughs> my lover who had, through his sweat, uh, made this uh, substance, transformed it. It's a very nervous, we call it, it's a material that transforms wonderfully, this sugar, from light pink and airy, it dissolves into concentrated red, bloody. And this is a whole project which we're not gonna talk about that I made from newspapers. And I'm just ending this uh, lecture. I, I meant you to talk to me th as we go along, but uh, maybe we have one minute left even for, for uh, questions. Two pieces I made when I was in Cooper Union. Both of them, I think, the most uh, verbally, uh, I had to present them as feminists, because they were. Uh, this is influenced by Carol Gilligan's um, writings about entering of the wall in the traumatic way. There was a chapter about entering patriarchy and entering the wall, entering traumatically. I took a, I had to give in a work and finish the semester one piece. I had money for one little package of um, FEMO, it's called, and I made this swimmer and, um, and entered the wall with her. And then I did a, they said it was a performance. I showed Hans Hacke how I'm milking a bull. I, I bred, you, could, you don't see it in the photo, many, many catalogs of the, the names and the qualities of different kind of sperm. But it was the milking is just made out of it's a milking machine for um, for female um, cows, not for bulls. So. Okay, just to show you what salt can do. It's in the lowest place of the world where I started working with salt, and this is last year. So that's it for now. If the, if you want to talk a little something, I know there's no questions usually. All is clear, like they say in German. It, Sorry that it's so short. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.